This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. The inspiration for the Wankel rotary engine is derived from the geometric principle that when a circle is rolled on its own circumference along another circle that has double the radius, a curve known as an epitrochoid is created. This curve forms the shape of the inner walls of the rotor housing. The rotor housing hosts all stages of the rotary engine's combustion cycle, much like a cylinder in a conventional engine. As for the shape of the rotor, a triangle is ideal because it yields the most effective configuration within the housing. The three apexes of the triangular-shaped rotor move uniformly along the inside walls of the rotor housing, dividing the cavity between the rotor and the interior walls of the housing into three continually changing regions of volume. Because of the unique configuration of a rotary engine, they're classified as variable volume progressing cavity systems. Each rotor has three faces, and each face has three cavities of volume per housing. In effect, each face of the rotor sweeps its own volume as the rotor moves in an eccentric orbit within the housing. Each side of the rotor is brought closer to and then further away from the walls of the internal housing, compressing and expanding the combustion chamber. A rotor is effectively akin to a piston, but where the piston volume changes as the piston travels up and down in a cylinder, the volume, configuration, and position of the operating cavity changes as the rotor orbits in an eccentric path. And at the heart of the Wankel rotary engine is a seemingly simple, small, odd-looking component that's absolutely critical to its operation and has challenged engineers for decades. Starting in the early 1960s, Mazda has released a slew of unique Wankel rotary-powered models such as the Cosmo, RX-3, and three generations of the Mazda RX-7. The iconic history of Mazda and the evolution of the Wankel rotary engine began with a joint study contract between Mazda and the German car firm NSU. At the time, NSU was spearheading research and development efforts to bring the first Wankel-powered automobile to the market. NSU was eventually successful with the release of the NSU Spider, which came equipped with a water-cooled single rotor engine and standard front disc brakes, which differentiate it from other similar cars of the period. NSU's follow-up to the Spider was the Row 80, which was believed to be ahead of its time, though it was quirky by modern standards. It was even fitted with a warning buzzer to alert the driver that the 9,000 RPM red line was approaching. Despite the praise, the Row 80 developed an early reputation for unreliability. Its ultimate failure came from the engine's premature lifespan, generous warranty policy, and tarnished image eventually bankrupting the firm. Early cars required an engine rebuild only after 50,000 kilometers. Many of these failures were attributed to poorly designed apex seal tips, a common weak point later realized in rotary engines. In order to keep compression in the chamber of a Wankel engine, the three tips of the rotor must form gas-tight seals against the inner walls of the rotor housing. This is accomplished by seals at the three apexes of the triangle, known as apex seals. These seals are usually made of metal and are pushed against the wall housing by springs. Since the seals are in contact with the housing's inner case, in order to reduce friction, they're covered in engine oil. Because of this exposure of engine oil to the combustion process, a rotary engine burns oil by design. The amount of oil used is metered by a throttle-controlled metering pump. Because of the direct contact of the apex seals, the biggest obstacle engineers faced in initial designs were the chatter marks on the rotor housing's sliding surfaces. Frictional vibrations of the apex seals caused this issue and it was dubbed the devil's nail marks. Further contributing to the issue was inadequate lubrication of the rotor housing, the natural frequency of the seal elements, and the inherent static and dynamic friction of the sealing interface. This placed a greater demand on the materials used to construct apex seals. Mazda's initial approach was to use ceramics for sealing. While this was effective, it proved to be too costly a solution for production. Their first practical breakthrough was achieved by using a cross-hollow cast iron apex seal. This design had two longitudinal and several cross-perpendicular holes that assisted in reducing high-frequency vibrations. The use of this complex design would later be revised in an attempt to further reduce manufacturing costs. From 1967 to 1973, Mazda switched to the use of a 6mm aluminum impregnated apex seal. These seals were developed from a joint venture between Mazda and Nihon Carbon. This new design utilized Nihon's pyrographite high strength carbon compound technology. To an extent, these carbon seals were self lubricating, addressing the issue facing the rotor housing wall surface. 
They were also used in conjunction with an aluminum rotor housing with chrome-plated walls for durability. From 1973 to 1975, a cast iron apex seal replaced the carbon compound design previously used. This iteration of the apex seal was a new two-piece design with a main body and a triangular corner piece. This greatly enhanced the seal's gas sealing performance. This new design also saw a 3mm reduction in thickness. What made this possible was the new porous chrome plating on the interior walls of the rotor housing. The surface finish of this plating improved the effectiveness of the lubrication between the apex seal and the rotor. The tip of the seal that made direct contact with the housing was also crystallized into a carbide. This was accomplished through a process known as electron beam chill hardening and it gave the seal tip a ceramic-like composition. Electron beam hardening is a material hardening process that uses an organized column of electrons as an energy source. The bombardment of the electron column on the material surface creates heat ramping up the temperature until the hardness is increased. This allows a material to have superior surface wear resistance. From 1975 to 1980, it was discovered that the current Apex Seal version was subjected to high thermal and centrifugal loads during high RPM operation and under periods of high engine load. To rectify this issue, Mazda implemented a slight crown of 0.05 mm at the higher center section of the seal. This additional crowning compensated for the rotor housing's slight deformation under high loads, ensuring sufficient contact with the rotor housing walls. Mazda also improved the corner pieces by incorporating a spring design to keep the clearance of the rotor groove at a minimum. This dramatically improved gas sealing over the solid springs used on the previous version. By the early 1980s, further refinements by Mazda led to the adoption of a top cut design that extended the main seal. The purpose was to reduce gas leakage at one end of the apex seal where it would segment into two pieces. From 1985 to 2002, the apex seal had been further reduced in size to 2 mm. A new three-piece configuration had replaced the two-piece design used previously. Changes also included a division of the main seal laterally and at an angle. Now there would be an upper and a lower section while still retaining the triangular end portions. The new top section slides vertically up and down on the lateral and angle contact surfaces of the lower seal section, promoting tighter gas sealing. Additionally, Mazda filled the center cavity of the spring corners with a heat-resistant rubber epoxy, adding additional sealing properties. This latest iteration of the Apex seal design was used in Mazda's iconic high-output, low-weight, twin-turbocharged 13B REW engine. Made famous by the third-generation RX-7, it was used until the engine was finally dropped from production and replaced with the Renesis engine, which used its own apex seal design. The apex seal in the Renesis engine was now a two-piece design made from cast iron with low carbon content. This version retained the 2mm thickness used in the previous generation, but the height was reduced to 4.5mm versus the three-piece's overall height of 4.8mm. This version was also crowned and the tips were rounded to better follow the rotor housing sliding surfaces up to the 9000 RPM redline. Additionally, the spring corner seal's contact surface was chrome-plated and a cast iron plug replaced the elastic filler piece since the seal is now exposed to the hot exhaust port area. Mazda's last production year of the RX-8 marked the end of its use of the Wankel rotary engine. It was abandoned largely due to its poor fuel efficiency and emissions. Despite these setbacks, the company continues to work on the technology, embracing it as the brand's signature feature. Ten years later after bidding farewell to the RX-8 with the Spirit R Special Edition, Mazda unveiled its latest iteration of the rotary engine at the 2023 Brussels Motor Show with the MX-30 eSky Active REV. However, this time around the groundbreaking crossover's rotary engine is not intended for performance, but rather a range extender, propelling the vehicle to travel significantly farther than its purely electric counterpart. The 830cc engine with direct injection and a compression ratio of 11.9 to 1 creates 75 horsepower at 4700 RPM. It's expected to use a two-piece apex seal design similar to that of the Renesis engine. Unlike conventional setups, the wheels are exclusively powered by an electric motor generating 167 horsepower and 191 pound-feet of torque, while the rotary engine is configured as a generator drawing upon its 13-gallon gas tank to extend the vehicle's range up to 373 miles. As the automotive industry continues its rapid evolution towards electrification, 
Mazda's reimagined rotary engine hopes to keep the enduring legacy of this novel power plant alive by presenting a compelling solution for transitional hybrid vehicle power plants. It's amazing to think that such a seemingly simple component has been the limiting factor for decades of engine development. It took extensive analysis to understand the modes of vibration and distortion that were occurring under high RPM loads to begin to even address the problem. Mathematical thinking plays a vital role in engineering problem solving, and with Brilliant.org, reinforcing your mathematical thinking skills to enhance your problem solving abilities has never been easier. Brilliant is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. Brilliant is constantly developing their courses to offer the most visual, hands-on approach possible to make mastering the key concepts behind today's technology effective and engaging. In fact, one of my favorite tools to strengthen your mathematical mind is Brilliant's Mathematical Thinking Learning Path. This intuitive progression of courses allow you to build, examine, and self-discover the foundational concepts needed to view problems through the eyes of mathematical thinking using interactive exercises. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days and start learning STEM today, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.